when we left uh, Glasgow, they had pulled the blinds and they didn't open it up until we used to unload in the train yards at Southampton. We'd gone through London and all the other towns, we didn't see a one of them. But anyway, they loaded us on this Polish boat and uh, we sailed for La Havre. When we got to La Havre, of course, we we unloaded and at La Havre, up past the town, they have a number of camps where they'd take troops coming into Europe and put them in these camps. These camps were named after cigarette, like a Lucky Strike, a Camel, and whatever. I don't remember the name of the one I was on. But anyway, when we went through Southampton, or rather, La Havre, there was a lot of destruction. And uh, the, the, uh, the people there, women, we could see them up and looking down at us as we marched by. They didn't seem all that happy to see us. But I, I learned later, fact is, I think just a few months ago, that the bombing the Har, one, uh, one raid, they missed the port that they were aiming at and hit the town and killed 6,000 people in the Har. Well, obviously, that's not going to win friends and influence people. So uh, that's the reason we were getting much, much of reception, even for the guys who were throwing candy and cigarettes up to the women who were looking out at us. In the beginning of the war, The British did a survey of how effective their bombing was, and they found that only three bombs out of a hundred got within five miles of the target. Now that wasn't hitting the target, that was just within five miles of it. So uh, they decided, well, the solution to this is get bigger targets. So that, that's what they did. They started bombing cities. And from then on, you, you, you know the rest. Berlin, Dresden, Cologne, all those murderous raids that killed tens of thousands of civilians. So, uh, but we stayed in uh, the Har, I suppose, the camp for two or three days, I don't remember. And then they marched us back to the railroad yards in the Har, and uh, put it on a troop train. Well, while waiting for the troop, troop train to go, you had the train facilities. The facilities was behind a fence on the other side of the fence. The thing was, on the other side of the fence was the town. So <laughs> we're protecting us from our own GIs. Anyway, so uh, we take off. And on the way, of course, we just stopped and use the fields, but the uh, that was the most miserable ride because they had one of these French trains. In these compartments, there's no place to lie down, so try sitting up for a couple days and see how much fun that is. One spot in, I think, I don't know, France could have been Belgium. We stopped alongside a tr troop, uh, pass uh, prison train going the other direction into France. It was just packed in open coal cars with German prisoners, so tight that I don't think if one died he could fall down. I wish I had taken the time to listen to what this guy was saying, uh, talking to the Germans, like how long had they been there? You know, how long they been on the train, when they eaten, and all that stuff, because I'm, they weren't treated very well, I'm sure, especially going into France, because the France was going to use them up. They were going to demine France, and who knows what else. If you read the book, Other Losses, by, uh, I can't remember the name of the author right now, you find out that being a prisoner of the Americans, the Allies, was no fun. They could be just as cruel and 
treat you very bad as the Russians, although not quite, because from Stalingrad, the 300,000 uh, soldiers that were captured at Stalingrad, only 5,000 returned to Germany, so nothing could hardly be that much. Anyway, we went on to uh, into Belgium, and uh, after dark, we were stopped at a, we were going to unload at a town. This is pitch dark. You could hear the guns up ahead. We were we got off onto the platform, and it was like an old, I used, as a kid, read move, uh, books about World War I, and the soldiers would get off at a train in the total darkness, and here we were doing the same thing in World War II. So we walked out, oh, I think a couple of miles or so, to an abandoned factory, and that was our home for until we moved uh, up closer to the front as it moved forward into Germany. That will be coming in my next uh, episode.